So 
it's like saying that you don't trust God to take care of your needs. God will deliver you out of anxiety, if that's what you're feeling, or anything that you pray for. You just have to put your faith in Him. And just by saying it over and over, that's like saying that you don't trust in Him to deliver you out of whatever you're going through. says that God knows what you need before you even ask Him. So just one time is efficient. And then we go on to talk about how Jesus will tell us how to pray. So in verse 9, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is on earth Father. 
was in secret shall report thee openly. So we do things for God in secret so that it won't be a stumbling block to other people. Just like I was saying, if we show off money and we do a good deed for somebody, then we don't ever reward because we just showed off that money. We didn't practice somebody that we did something for somebody. Also, whenever we speak many repetitions, some people may not be able to speak and then therefore it would be a stumbling block to them. Because we got one person over here who's repeating the same thing over and over and then we got another person over here who may pray in their mind because they cannot speak that it would be a stumbling block to them. And also if somebody is a fast and and then we eat fruit, food in front of somebody who is fasting, then that would be a stumbling block to them as well because they will be tempted to eat. So, chapter our verse 19, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Isn't that just the truth? So, back to what I have said before. If we have treasures on earth, just as like gaining a worldly gain of a lot of money, um, a lot of fancy cars that are really expensive, and you know, just other kinds of treasures on earth, don't do that because eventually money's gonna run out. Anything could happen to make your money run out. You could have a bunch of riches one day and then the very next day God could take it all away. Just like that. Um, but we need to lay up treasures in heaven. Things that are not seen. You cannot see faith. You can't see God. Actual God. You can see people doing works through God but you can't see God. Um, trust. You cannot see trust. Um, you know, these are just things that we have in secret in our minds that we have laid up because God has given it to us through faith. And a lot of these things, money can't buy. You can't buy trust. You can't buy faith. You cannot buy mercy or grace. It is all from God. So, that is much better than things that are eventually not going to be here. We will all die one day. We cannot take cars with us. We cannot take jewels with us. We can't take money with us. All those things are just going to have to stay here. This is a temporary home for us. This is not our home. This is just a passing. You know, everything's going to come to pass. But our real home is in heaven. Where God will supply everything that we need there as well. So, chapter, or verse 22. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. So, a good eye is generous and gives to people, but an evil eye only looks at selfish ways and again gains things for themselves, such as riches and treasures on earth. No man can serve it masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon, which mammon is translated as money. 
treasures in heaven for you, things that cannot be seen. So you have to pick a side. Are you going to serve Satan or are you going to serve God? Satan only gives you things on earth that are given. Verse 26, 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment which is clothes. God will supply all of your needs. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows what you need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take, therefore, no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So take it one day at a time. God already knows what you need before you even ask for it. And that's why there's a verse in Matthew chapter 19 verse 24 that says, Again I say unto you that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. That is true. Because if we go back to the verse that says that you cannot serve both God and money, you will either love one and hate the other sums it up for itself. So, choose this day who you will serve. Are you serving Satan or are you going to serve God? God always wins. So, again, if we place anything at all before God, such as money or a car or even a person, if we idolize something, Away and God will take it away. But if we have a faith that will never be took away, faith in God cannot be took away. Things that are visible cannot be took away, such as trust and faith. And sometimes God can take things that are worldly away, such as a mansion if you put it before God. We can 
of God is not in him because something else took over instead of God. So, that is basically it on Matthew 6. 